Okay, guys, this is a highly requested video that I'm going to do on my laser printer to helpfully, hopefully help you with your printer output when you are foiling. Now, I will say this. We are not printer experts. Every printer is different. Every laser printer is different. Toner is going to matter. Paper is going to matter. Your image is going to matter. So all I can try to do is tell you what the settings are on my printer. If you're having other issues, it could be because of your image, your paper, your toner, and even the foil that you're using. So I'm going to give you the best practices that I have to offer to you. Um, if you're having any issues, you can try to print your, Im your take a picture of your images and post them in the Foiling Snobs Club, but there are a lot of things that take it, that into factor. All right, so first of all, let me talk about the printer. It has to be a laser printer. A black and white laser printer will work just fine. You do not need a color laser printer. If you use a color laser printer, anything you print with the laser printer, it doesn't matter what color it is, will foil, but black and white laser printed images tend to work best. Anywhere there is toner, that is where it will stick. So on this particular Brother model, this is the Brother HL. 2360DW. I believe they have come up with a modern one. This one is a Wi Fi one. That's not really going to make that big of a difference, but you want something that's going to print at least 600 DPI or dots per inch. Here is the paper tray, and you can load regular paper in here. I do like this one because it is front loading and I can print on 100. Um, 80 and 100 pound cardstock and the secret to this is although you can't see it there's actually a door in the back there so what this does is it feeds through the front and then it will either curl up and come out the top here but for laser printing you don't want that or for foiling you want it to go through the machine pass through and come out of the back of the machine which is actually back there, okay? So that's number one. So black and white laser printer, 600 DPI or higher, front loading with a rear um, exit, which be, would be better because then you're not rolling up your toner. Um, if you are getting a lot of flaking or residue, that's probably why, because your printer is going through too many rollers. Anyway, let's talk about settings when we're printing. So I'm also going to be loading this up with some Hamilco... 80 pound semi-gloss paper, which you can pick up from Amazon. It comes in a little box like this. Um, they call it white glossy cardstock, 50 pages, but I like the 80 pound. Now, when I load this, I'm going to load this into my front feeder here. And it will feed that in in just a second. Okay, all right. Here is where I think people have difficulty is in the settings. So I'm going to bring up my Silhouette Studio software. You can use Inks, Inkscapes. You can use whatever software you're using, but I'm just more familiar with my Silhouette software. Now, this is a Kitchen Sink Stamps background. Um, this is part of the Happily Ever After backgrounds, which you will have access to January 25th if you want to purchase it from Kitchen Sink Stamps. And when you download it, you're going to download it as... I will actually work, walk you through that process. You're going to open it. This is my Kitchen Sink Stamps folder. This is called, uh, where is it? I thought it was called Happily Ever After. Maybe it's just called Ever After. Here it is, Ever After Backgrounds, okay? And there are four that are available. I'm giving you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of what's gonna be available. Um, this one's got some lines. This one's got that Harlequin and then uh, like little stars, I uh, think princess and things like that, magical fairies and stuff like that. Okay, so this is the one I want to download. I'm going to choose the import as image and I'm going to choose 1200 DPI. Okay, I'm going to go as high as my, my computer will allow me to do. Then I'm going to hit import and then it's going to open up to this screen right here. <clears throat> The higher you import it, the better, again, the image is going to look. So once I have that open, now I need to print it to my printer. So I'm going to go up to, let me zoom in here and see if I can help that be a little. 
and I'm going to go to print. Okay, and it's going to print this whole page for me. I'm going to choose my laser printer and I'm going to go to preferences. Once I go to preferences, this is going to open up as the settings page for the printer. Now, this is where people kind of start messing around with the settings and things don't normally work out. So the first thing you want to change is your media type and you want to change it to thick paper. You don't want plain or thin paper because we want a lot of toner because, again, the more black it is, the more toner we have down on our printed image, the better the foil is going to stick. So change it to thick paper. Now, there are certain papers, no matter what, that you put into the machine that may not work correctly. Uh, a notorious one that is difficult is vellum and some foil papers don't work. Foil card, okay? The Hamilco is pretty good. I have Craft Essentials Black card stock is pretty good. I am working on some other experimental papers to try to help you guys out that cannot get those papers that are in other parts of the world. The second thing is resolution. Now, you can get away with 600 DPI, but if you do 1200 DPI, it's better. But I would say either 600 or 1200. The choice is 1200. Now, all of these settings are going to use more toner. You cannot skimp on the toner. So let me show you the next setting. So I'm going to put 1200 DPI. And then I'm going to go up to this tab here that says Advanced. Once I go to the Advanced tab, there's another box down here that says Other Print Options. Click on that. Then we're going to go to Improve Print Output. Okay, whatever you do, um, do not go to density adjustment. You should not be changing anything there unless you have a really old printer. If you have to check your density adjustment, I would say normal to darkest, but you want no less than normal or you want to try to go darker. That does not always help you. If you put way too much toner down, you are going to have overfoiling because there's going to be toner flex all over your paper. So do not try to over. Uh, toner it either. So I leave mine to printer default. Then I'm going to go to improve printer outbook, output and I want improved toner fixation. Okay. Now there is a setting improved toner fixation. What that's going to do is it's going to heat up our toner a little bit hotter and longer so that it sticks to the paper quicker. Okay. And then hit okay. Now there is a setting in here that says toner save mode. Do not have that clicked. What that is going to do is under toner your image and you will not get enough toner for the foil to stick to. So if you have toner save mode clicked on yours, unclick it, go into other print options, improve print output and click improve toner fixation. That will help dry the toner a little quicker. Hit okay. Hit OK, and then we are going to print. I will also write these instructions down and put them in the units in the Foiling Snobs Club folder for you guys for the Brother Printer. Okay, now what's going to happen is it's sending all of the information to my printer. And you will see, it's on a little drawer here, but it will feed through and it will not come out the top. It will come out the back. Actually, I actually have to reach behind the machine to grab it. So now it's done. I want to try to just grab it by the edge. And I very carefully pull it out from the machine. And do not try to touch any of that toner or have anything lay on top of it. And you can see that they are pretty solidly printed. Okay. I'm going to now pause the video. And I will go do, to the Mink machine and I will foil this out for you guys. Okay guys, so to continue this, I have cut that paper we just printed out into some strips and then we're going to foil it. So I've cut my foil down. Now it's important when you are using a mink machine and I will always 100% recommend a mink machine over a laminator if you want the best foiled results. There are very expensive laminators out there that claim to be, or some people claim them to be as good as a mink machine that is incorrect. The mink machine has more pressure and more heat. So you will always get superior results with the mink machine hands down. If you're trying to do this with a laminator, it's not anywhere near going to be as good as a uh, mink machine, okay? So the other thing is you always want to dust 
your image. So we have a little dusty, dusty brush here. And you always want to dust the back of your foil. Okay. Foil is also going to matter, as you guys are going to see here in a moment. And then I like to put mine in transfer folders when you're using the mink. If you are using a laminator, you do not use transfer folders. You use just a regular piece of folded parchment paper. And you can see I have my mini mink here on setting three. If you are going to be using a laminator, you need to lead it, let it heat up for a minimum, a minimum of a half an hour. And again, not all laminators are going to be the same. If you are going to be using the larger mink or big mama mink, I recommend using um, setting uh, four for that one. And again, it also depends on the cardstock you print it on. If you print it on a thicker, heavier cardstock, then um, you might need to go to setting five. Now, as that goes through the machine, you want to let it cool before revealing it. And what dusting does is it keeps the little black spots out of the foil. Also, you should cut your foil down to the approximate size of the image you want to foil. Any kind of excess foiling like this one has that's hanging over the edge is going to cause you to have wrinkling. Now certainly I will always try to answer as many questions as you guys have. You can put them in the Foiling Snobs Club group or you can email us at the Foiling Snobs Club at gmail.com. But again, I don't know every single printer manufacturer. I don't know what the printer is you're using. I don't know what the image you're using. I don't know what kind of foil you're using. So those are all things I need to know to help troubleshoot. You can also find a lot of the answers to most of your questions on my um, playlist, I have a toner foiling playlist. I also have a hot foiling playlist, which is a completely different world. Um, but check out the Foiling Snobs Club on Facebook, and we will always try to help you as much as we can help you. But when it comes to certain types of printers and settings, there's only so much I can try to help you out with there. Did I dusty dusty this? This is where I forget things. You always want to let it cool completely before you reveal it. Now I'm going to reveal these and I'm going to show you the difference that foil makes. I've used four different manufacturers of foiling and hopefully you'll be able to see the difference the way I see them. So I'm going to zoom in a little closer here. Oh, maybe not. No zooming in. So again, these were all printed from the same printer with the settings that I so showed you. 1200 DPI, Hamilco glossy or semi-glossy paper. It doesn't matter. It's the same brand. 80 pound. Um, I'm going to turn my mink off. I'll, my mink looks different because I put um, vinyl wrapping on it. So this is warm. We want to let this cool down. And I'm going to reveal them in the order that I put them in because those should be all cool. And then I will tell you guys at the end which foiling companies I used. And we'll see if the savvy ones can figure it out. Some of you foiling fiends. My transfer folders need to be cleaned. Okay. So let's start with this one, the gold one. Okay, it's not bad. There um, is some foiling spots. I may not have done a good job dusty dusty there, but for the most part, it's pretty good. There are some random spots where the foil kind of wrinkled. So it's still usable. It's just not 100% perfect. There are quite a few 
dusty, dusty spots on there. But this is from the foil, foil wrinkling. Okay, so that's that one. This one. Oh my gosh, what happened there? Wow, that just doesn't look right. Now, if you have foiling that looks like this, we're going to talk about that. For those of you that have been watching me for a while, you already know what happened here. But I needed to show this example because we get this question asked all the time. And we're going to talk about what the problem was here. Okay. That one came out beautifully. Just a small, dusty, dusty spots on there. Look at all that holographic shimmer on that one but that one worked out okay and then last but not least also pretty good two dusty dusty spots on there but that one foiled beautifully as well okay so let's talk about the foils here so um the pink one very easily that is my textile foil that you can get from h and h we do have a link for that this is called hollow rainbow this is the foil i'm always going to recommend if you can get it it's a super thick quality textile foil which means that the sheets itself are much thicker the quality of the foil is better and you can see you get very nice super foil quality coverage there i mean there's just that little dusty dusty spot but very nicely done, okay? The better your foil, the better your foiling is going to be. This one here is actually two companies that sell this one. So Tattered Lace, for those of you in the UK, and also Crafty Krita sells this foil. So this also foiled okay. Um, there's a couple dust spots in here as well. But again, for those of you that are in Australia or in the UK, Tattered Lace and also Crafty Krita sell the same brand of foil and it works fine, okay? This one is my least favorite foil. Um, I'm sure you guys can tell the foil itself is very flimsy and it just doesn't transfer all the time the best that it could. And that is gonna be the foil most of you have, which is mink foil um, or deco foil. It's just not as, it's not on thicker carrier sheets. It is probably the easiest in terms of accessibility because all the big stores carry it. But mink foil and deco foil, um, you're going to get, again, okay results, but it's not going to be as high quality results as you can get with um, um, textile foil. So if you can search textile foil, the link that we have through H&H &H is going to give you the least expensive textile foil. You're going to get a large 12 inch roll by 25 feet where these guys are only going to give you a couple sheets or a small roll of foil. You're going to end up paying more. Okay. And again, I know that some of you guys are in the UK and you can't get all of these things or other places. So I wanted to just make sure that I, I named a couple different foil companies to help you out depending on where you are in the world. Okay. All right. And the last but not least, a lot of people say, why does that happen to me? What happened? And as soon as you post your picture on the group, I know exactly what you did. You bought foil and thought you could foil with it and it's the wrong kind of foil. So this was the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill foil. Just this stuff right here. Just because it says foil does not mean that it will work, okay? So it specifically says here heat activated foil. So the We Are Memory Keepers foil comes in sheets. It comes in rolls. Um, the Crafter's Companion Gemini Foil Press foil is also hot foil. The Spellbinder's Glimmer foil is hot foil. And the one that most people get duped with is the Couture Creations Go press and foil foil. You see a good deal. They normally are only about $2 a roll, um, but those are all heat activated foil. So if they come in a little roll in a little box, most likely that is hot foil. The rest of these foils normally come in much larger rolls or they come in these kinds of sheets that are already pre-cut. So you do need to be careful in reading what kind of foil you are purchasing. If you don't know if you have hot foil or toner foil, I will have a video linked at the end of this where I do demonstrate how you can test that. But it does make a difference. Mink foil or toner foiling cannot use hot foil and hot foil cannot be used um, 
or uh, in the, you don't want to use toner foils in the hot foiling system. So I hope that this helps you out with your settings. I will also post a PDF into the group at the Foiling Snobs Club. If you have any questions, you can always email me at the Foiling Snobs Club at gmail.com or post your questions down below. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and keep on foiling. Bye-bye.